my kindergarten teacher, she kept the scrapbook of images and Christmas cards and postcards and things that she'd clipped out of magazines. And that scrapbook was the thing that she let the kid who was the best behaved that day look at while everybody else took their nap after recess. And really was the day that I got a chance to look at that book that changed me. Um, because looking through that book, I was saying to myself, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to make pictures like these. I want to make pictures that make other people feel the way these pictures are making me feel. I became a compulsive image collector. <laughs> Literally, I had thousands and thousands and thousands of images. I'd go to the thrift stores and buy books and encyclopedias and magazines and stuff like that, only to cut them up because I, needed, I wanted to get the pictures. And so I had this incredible archive of images. What they call for artists, they call a morgue. You know, and Leon Gollop uses that a lot. If you saw that Cartampan documentary on Leon Gollop, you could see how he's got these folders in this file. He's got this, like, here's a gun. They had a program at the Otis Art Institute, a drawing class for junior high school kids. And once I found out there was a place called an art school, well, it was over. <laughs> it was over for me. There was an artist uh, named Charles White who taught there. I had never seen images of black people rendered as powerfully as the ones he did. And when I was in that drawing class, the teacher who taught it said, you know what, Charles White has a studio upstairs. And he took us up to that room, and that was like, that was the magic. Because in the studio, you could see work that was finished and work that had just begun. And you could see that the work that was just begun didn't look anything at all like the work that was finished. And so you could see that it took work. There was an exhibition back in the early 80s called Black Folk Art in America. That exhibition introduced the work of vernacular artists, you know, African-American untrained artists, that most people had never really seen before. Bill Trailer was in that, Sam Doyle, uh, Sister Gertrude Morgan, Nellie Mae Rowe. There was power in a lot of this work, which is different from the kind of power that you would see in, say, a Rembrandt. So what is it that makes that work that powerful? And how do I get some of that, too? 